I'm sorry, we started? Sticky tablet kids. I'm sure <laughs> toddlers enchanted by their bewitching device, they stare into the colorful screen, eyes wide and mouths wide, probably with the hand inside, drooling as burgers stream down their face and they're completely oblivious to the environment that surrounds them. I'm sure we've all seen a sticky iPad kid before, and apart from looking at them and wondering what's going on in their heads, they disgust us. But are we really so different from these toddler menaces? Students in one of my classes had an average daily screen time of six hours. Six hours a day, just on their phones. And this wasn't just any class, it was an AP class, a college level course, and I surveyed the 28 students a week before midterms. And you'd think they'd be putting down their phone and pick up a textbook instead. And six hours may not seem like a long time to you, but it's around the same number of hours that we spend in a school day. So, rather than telling you all that you just need to spend less time on your phones, it's important to understand why we spend so much time on our devices and how they hook us into spending an endless time on our appealing screens. As you probably already know, app developers and many companies are aware of how we're hooked to their product, and they spend time and resources making their products even more addicting to hook us into them. You've seen these through apps like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and if any of you still use it, Facebook. You look up one YouTube video and end up thinking, hmm, the next one looks interesting, but that'll be the last one I watched. But soon, you look up at the ceiling, countless hours later, and wonder, what happened with my time? You're not alone, though, as this happens as YouTube itself admits that people all across the globe watch one billion, of hour, one billion hours of video every single day. That's over a million hours, that's over a million hours of living, that's over a million of hours of life per day, every day. But how do they make these products so addicting? They do this by manipulating our levels of dopamine, a chemical that makes us feel good. This chemical is produced in our brain and plays a crucial role in motivating us. It gets released when we take a bite of delicious food, after we exercise, and also after we have successful social interactions. It rewards, for uh, it rewards us for beneficial behaviors and motivates us to repeat them. And just like the use of hard drugs, although not as intense, they cause the release of dopamine in our brain. And phones can do this. Phones can cause the release of dopamine in our brain. When released, the chemical causes feelings of bliss, happiness, and relief. And smartphones have provided us an unlimited supply with this chemical, providing us with temporary feelings of pleasure at our fingertips. The idea of getting a dopamine response out of the consumer is something utilized by all companies because it's so, it's so effective, and many of us don't even realize it. If you watch a video on YouTube or TikTok that's interesting or entertaining, a small amount of dopamine will be released when you experience the sounds or images that you find satisfying or make you laugh. You'll keep swiping and watching more videos to get this feeling of bliss, and you'll have a tough time breaking the cycle to get this dopamine increase. And if you don't know someone who's addicted to the device, I'm sure you know someone around them who is. Freshman year of high, freshman year of high school, a student in my honors English class told me about how they'd fallen asleep at 3 a.m. the previous night, unable to stop laughing, uh, unable to stop scrolling through TikTok. And I was absolutely shocked. Why didn't they just put down their phone and go to sleep? But I soon found myself in the same situation, countless times, but on a different app, on Instagram. But when I went to San Jose for Thanksgiving break, my cousin called my cousins and I, my other cousins and I, a screenager. Now, why did my cousin Nikki call us this? We didn't get it. But we soon figured out what it meant. A teenager that spends a lot of time on their screens. A screenager. And it doesn't make, it doesn't sound that annoying, but when it's directed at you multiple times an hour every single day, it makes you mad. But we only really realized how intense the situation was when we realized there were scriddles around us too, many of them. In fact, according to the university, a study published by the University of Harvard, a Harvard University, adults touch their phone more than 2,600 a day. 
sounds like a squirrel adult to me. But then teenagers spend countless more hours than this on their phone daily. So this, is a fa this fact astounded me. Did I really spend, did I touch my phone that much? So I deleted my most used app, Instagram. And what happened? The next week, my screen time dropped dramatically. But two weeks after that, it increased exponentially because I spent my time on different apps, like Snapchat, instead. So, this is because scrolling and watching videos isn't the only way our devices cause dopamine release. It's one of the most well-known ways. The bright and, uh, sorry, bright and eye-catching colors, pleasing sounds, and uh, familiar notifications and messages, uh, messages and updates also release dopamine in our brains no matter which app or device we're looking at. Do you feel a sudden terror, worried and anxious thoughts suddenly flooding your brain after you feel your pocket and realize your phone isn't there? And then you realize, oh, it's in the bathroom where I left it moments before and a wave of relief suddenly hits you? You're not alone. In fact, I'm sure most of us here feel that way about our devices. It's easy to fall into this mindset where we get super irritated and turn into the Grinch when people mention it or call it out to us as well. But it's because you don't just associate certain apps with dopamine, you also soon associate your phone itself with dopamine. Just by picking up your phone, you get this feeling of relief, bliss, or happiness, even if you haven't unlocked it yet. Josh, a young software engineer I know, tackled this from a completely different angle. He got rid of his phone. He purchased a grandpa phone instead. One that only had the functionality of calling or texting. But something else Josh said stuck with me. He said something along the lines of, if you don't change what's in your heart, even getting rid of your devices won't do anything. Because you find every other way to waste time. So what does this mean? This wide space that we have in our lives, that we feel like we're wasting on our devices, we have to fill with something we love doing, what interests us, what we have a passion for. And once you can do this, if you look around you, people who aren't addicted to their phones, if you look at them, they'll do what they love doing with that, free, that white space in their lives. And if we can do that, we can begin to understand that technology is designed to be addictive. But it's up to us to change that. It's up to us to build better digital habits. So, the next time you're in your room alone, you're bored, you're in an awkward situation, Will you whip out your phone and be sucked in? Will you be a scrid, a screenager, a screwdult? Or will you be like the Grinch at the end of the movie? A happy old chap. Because now you understand what you can do. What, now you understand what makes you into the Grinch in the first place. And that you have the power to tackle that. You can be different from those darn little old <laughs> scrodlers you see around town. And that you can tackle this addiction it affects every single hour of your day. Thank you.